All right, so this looks like a weird cooking show. Um, I think I said I wasn't gonna make any more of these, um, and here I did it. So one more video. I had a request, it's a smart request, to shoot a video about like um, how to assemble this um, since the models changed quite a bit since the beginning, and then also there is this change that as of right now no one's seen. So during the premiere, um, there was a, a display of the prop and this was the US premiere in LA, <clears throat> that showed the, the prop split open. And it sort of revealed some of the internal details. There were only a couple photos around, although later some folks have sent me some, and thank you for those that did. Um, it was still kind of hard to make out some of the glyphs on the back because of the acrylics. I ran this through like an AI gigascaler to try to you know make like a 40 megapixel version of it, and then um, you know bump the contrast to try to work out the reliefs. And I think I got pretty close, um, but I'm sure it's not 100%. Specifically, like, the constellations, I think, I would have thought they would have related to Syracuse, like the Siege of Syracuse. They don't appear to be. Um, but I, I got them close-ish, but, I mean, are they 100%? No. So that's why you won't see me referring to this as a replica. It is a prop, but not a replica. Um, but, I mean, it looks cool. So, it's good. Uh, so the... Point of this build, I guess we're calling it Mark. What are we on four? Um, was to try to facilitate this display, like the premiere where you have it split open, um, and uh, also to make the uh, B side of the prop more interesting. So um, we'll talk about like assembly and uh, some of the differences here. So first, you'll print the A side of the prop, the B side of the prop. Uh, I generally, you'll see we're on printables like how I have a more end on the build plate. There's still going to be a lot of support removal uh, headaches and I usually try to print them at, at a high info rate so they're substantial like 80% or more. Um, but sometimes it's still I'm unable to get the supports out and, and end up, you know, damaging or scraping the thing trying to get them out. You know what? It looks weathered, right? Yeah, let's go with that. Um, <laughs> the, I wanted the B side, so you're going to print the A side, you're going to print the B side. I will say that um, if you print them and then paint them black first and then shoot across with gold, um, the grain, then you'll have like a shoot across the glyphs, then some of the black will bleed through and adds dimensionality to those to the glyphs. It helps them to pop a little more, especially on the back. Um, so uh, just, just something I've noticed is that that, and if you paint it black first, then you can choose how weathered you want the thing to look broadly by going lighter with the gold. So um, <clears throat> I wanted the B side, so you printed the A, you printed the B. Um, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna print this uh, gear plate. And what I would recommend is printing this in something substantial. So nylon, this is actually carbon fiber, uh, either carbon fiber nylon or, or bamboo's carbon fiber PLA, which feels more like carbon fiber with ABS, but anyway. Um, yeah, you want to print this at 100%. You want it to be substantial because it'll become a point of failure in the prop otherwise. Um, and then you're going to print this, what I'm calling the saw blade. You know, in the real prop, you can see there's this weird blade and then these, like, the way that, um, like, this, uh, like, I don't know, this, like, hood comes over top of it. It's just odd, right? Because the, the gear wouldn't do anything. It couldn't turn. You could imagine, like, a, like a table saw or something where that's a protection um, or like a break, but that doesn't appear the case. I think they just like kind of steampunkified it by gluing some gears on it. So that's what I'm doing too. Um, at any rate, print the gear plate again, something substantial, 100%. Print uh, infill and then print the, uh, what I'm calling this is the saw blade. And then you'll basically glue the saw blade to the gear plate. <clears throat> you'll paint this, you know, to be gold or whatever. You're gonna, some of the, the gears are free floating. Uh, you'll wanna just glue them to the back of the saw blade. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be that piece. The, um, <clears throat> on the B side of the prop, you're going to, this is a channel there, and you're gonna basically put glue on this side and then slide it in, align it so that these corners are like perfectly aligned. Put a piece of masking tape, let it sit, let it dry. Use good glue. Um, because again, this will become like a tension point of failure later. You want this to be solid. But when done, you can see that this makes the B side far more interesting already. Um, so that's cool. On assembly, <clears throat> so I print uh, these uh, clip rings and I do this on a black backing with a white pearlescent uh, or white silk uh, outer like top filament. And I found that if you stop the print at like 90%, then you know like the print heads going in different directions and so the light is polarized in a different direction because of the silk filament 
and so you you like it adds a little bit of that pearlescent um you know effect which is pretty cool so all right so we're gonna say um you're gonna install these well uh, oh one thing when handling uh the a side of this prop the kitty cat needs attention there apparently Okay, so when handling the A side of the prop, one thing I would mention is that this um, ring here that's going to be like a shelf for the inner glyph ring, it can be a little fragile. Um, so just be careful when you're doing your support removal and your painting not to like grab on this too hard. It's going to get strengthened when you glue this uh, glyph ring to it because this is going to add another like two and a half or two millimeters to it and it's going to get glued together and make it solid. Uh, and it will look like that, I believe, is how it looks on the prop. So once you've glued that down and then you kind of just like uh, tape it, hold it, let it set, then that'll become a lot more substantial. Uh, you're going to print these glyph rings in front and back variants. So this is the front and then this is the back. Um, and you've got the A side and the B side. What I've noticed is that you might want to just like kind of run, put them in the channel or you can get it back out to make sure that you've gotten enough room, you've removed supports or any rough areas. And once you're confident that it's gonna go in there, um, put a bead of good glue around inside, drop it in, put a piece of tape in a couple places to hold it, let it set. Same thing on the B side, you know. Put it in like halfway a little bit, make sure it's gonna go in all the way. Once you're sure, put a bead of glue, drop it in, um, tape it, let it set. Then, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to remove these for now because I'm not ready to glue them yet. There's going to be the eyepiece. So you will have printed this eyepiece and what I do with this is I align it so that this double fin portion is right about at the break of the box. Use side snippers to cut it here and here and you'll have two pieces. Um, you put some glue on the inside and attach it and tape it. You will have done this after these are installed, not before. Um, and then that, let that sit and be glued. <coughs> Pardon me. There will be a, a, the same thing on the back. There's a secondary ring uh, for the back, same deal. It doesn't have the eyepiece, but you'll rotate it so that the double fins are right at the break. Snip it, snip it, glue it again, only after you've put those on. That will be that for those details. Now let's look at the center stack. So the center stack is the stuff that's gonna go in the middle here. And I believe I, uh, so if you look at the um, if you look at the film prop, the center, uh, well, rain, uh, the center compass <clears throat> mount is actually mounted to what we were calling the, uh, we were calling it the, the viewfinder. And then it's probably mounted to this lower, it looks like marble, um, glyph disc. If I do that in this prop, then you've, you create a lot of like, lateral tension as people like take the compass in and out and play with it and then made out of plastics I'm concerned it's just going to be fragile so I didn't do that what I did is so the original um you know mark three and before had this center um like plug and then the plug just sort of jammed in there with tension and then if you ever if it got wallowed out you could just put like a piece of plastic and shove it in or you could glue it in I threaded um this one and I threaded it because we need it to be to be able to hold tension in two different places um, for the split display. So <clears throat> we have this threaded plug for the middle, and I will show you how that assembles in a sec. Uh, you're going to print your lower glyph disc, your viewfinder, and then your spiral, and then um, you know just a note on the whites. So anything that's like this white black combo. If you don't have a dual color printer, you can print the black first, print the white. Um, 
and then uh, prep your plate for each so it'll remove easy and then use like a transfer tape method. You could use like gaffer's tape or masking tape, lay it across and then peel it off your build plate and tacked glue the white piece to the black piece. Um, I'm using a bamboo printer with AMS so that makes that um, easy for me. Um, <clears throat> so there, uh, you, know, you print that stack. I will say that this Mark IV stack is a little skinnier than the Mark III stack because uh, I was trying to make room for, for this, this new thing here. So um, if you have Mark III parts, they may fit, but um, I don't know. So your general assembly is gonna look like this. Um, if you wanna show it um, all, all assembled, then you will, uh, actually it'll be easier this way. You can actually just put them all on that plate, slide it together, Make sure everything's lined up so you can see the threads. Take this threaded um, center plug, turn it in until it's tight and everything's not flopping around. If you want to display it split, then you're going to, again, this gear plate is gonna be glued to this and you're gonna use like an intermediate tension, right? So you're gonna put it here and then you're gonna take your center stack, and if you can push them together until the uh, gear plate is not interfering, so it's just gonna be as far as it can go without like interfering with those threads. Like I thought about notching it, but the real one wasn't notched, so I didn't do it either. Um, <clears throat> and then you're gonna thread it in, and then you're just essentially gonna create enough tension You're gonna create enough tension pushing these center stack parts down to be able to hold uh, that gear plate in place. Just, you're really just creating a pinching motion and then you'll be able to display it like that. And you're still gonna to have to hold it, like it's not gonna be, you know, but it held up like that at work. So, yeah. And finally, uh, compass. So uh, you'll print the our hand, um, the uh, inner, the glyph wheel for the hour hand, which looks like this. You're gonna push that in there. I will say like, um, you, know, you may need, need a little like uh, sandpaper just to kind of like, like score the edges of that little post to make sure it goes in there. Careful, it's fragile. And then um, <clears throat> I think the original uh, film prop actually has the hour hand, what I'm calling this hour hand and the minute hand are actually one, um, one thing. So they turn together and then it looks like in the making of, they also made an electronic version of the thing that where they move separately. Uh, these move separately. There are so hour hand, uh, compass mount. This is gonna be a, a big spacer. There are two spacers with lock rings. Uh, one is a little taller than the other. You'll do the taller one underneath the hour hand. Then you'll put the minute hand in. You see you have those like locking nubs just like the Mark III had. You're gonna use the smaller spacer as the last spacer. And what I've found is that if you kind of hold the uh, small spacer and the minute hand together, rotate them, and then you can rotate it back and then you get it, it's locked into place. Um, then you'll note, um, finally and most crucially, that the inside of the compass has two little dog ears that are going to engage with the inside of the threads of the of this guy. So this, this plug um, has ears, and then there's a receiving hole and channel on the compass mount. So um, when you assemble it, that's gonna slide in like this and it's gonna rotate in that channel and lock into place and there are stops to keep it from rotating 100 or 360 and then you're gonna rotate. Now, I will caution you that as you rotate this entire assembly, that eyepiece is gonna be here, so just be careful, but you can rotate it enough and then have some like pull motion and then you can, as you rotate it, you'll be able to separate the compass from the plug and then that gives you more room to move as you reorient it. So, um, 
yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and then the uh, compass body, essentially print the body, print the face, print the, uh, the flourish. I heat up a paper clip with a creme brulee torch, shove it in, um, turn it and uh, twist it out essentially, and then, uh, then take a, for the dial, there's dial, for the compass dial, uh, print the dial, and then I glue a piece of paper clip inside of it. And then that will go into that. And then this guy goes into here. Yeah, that's it. So uh, that's assemble, uh, assembly and kind of a walkthrough of how to make one of these. Um, good luck, hope you enjoyed the movie. It's out on digital streaming now and should be out on the right here soon. And um, you know, uh, thanks for positive feedback and, and some of the negative feedback, whatever, um, that I've had. And, uh, I appreciate it. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Uh, and you know, whatever, fortune and glory, blah, blah, blah.